Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to determine the missing length of a secant whenever two secants are meeting each other from a point outside of a circle. And this can be done by using this theorem. We call this as the secant secant power theorem. By definition, this theorem states that if two secants are drawn from an external point to a circle, so the external point that we have here is this point right here. It is located on the external part of the circle or outside of the circle. Then the product of the measures of one secant's external part and the entire secant is equal to the product of the measure of the other's secant external part and the entire secant. To better understand this, let's, uh, let's, I wrote this formula up here in words. When we say external, we refer to the outside length. So we are referring to the outside length. And if we say entire um, part right here, that's the whole thing. So again, external means the outside, while the entire means the whole thing. Okay, so in this example that we have here, we have this first secant, and there, this is another secant right here. So C is the external section or segment of the secant. So that's the external, it's located on the outside, so the measure of C and then multiply it, or the, it says here that it's equal to the product. So product means we multiply, which is on the entire. Entire means the whole thing. So that means we add C and D would be the entire thing or the entire or the whole uh, section of this uh, secant. So the outside times the whole thing. We do the same thing on the other secant. So that means it's the outside, which is the B, and then the whole thing. So again, outside times the whole thing, outside times the whole thing. So this is what we call as the secant, secant uh, power theorem. To better understand this, we will have some examples here. Let's take the first one. So in this example right here, we are given three on the um, external, and then we have five, which is located on the inside, and four on the external, and x on the inside. I will put the formula that we have from the um, um, from the first slide that we did. This is the formula up here. I'll put that up here. So we're gonna we're gonna use this formula in solving for this problem here. So let's take the first one. So we say external. So let's take this secant here. So the external means the outside is three. So I'm gonna write three times the entire, so that would be three plus five. So I'm gonna write three plus five, and that is equal to the external of the other secant, which is four, times the entire, which is gonna be the sum of four and x. Okay, so the next thing that we do is we are going to simplify this, so that would be three times three plus five is eight, and that is equal to, in this case here, we can't add the 4 and the x. However, we can distribute the 4 to each of the terms inside the parentheses. And that would come out 16 because 4 times 4 is 16 plus 4x. And then we multiply this. 3 times 8 is 24 is equal to 16 plus 4x. So then from here, we are going, we, we want the x by itself. That's what we wanted to know. What is the length of this uh, part here? So that would be minus 16 from both sides, minus 16. So then we are left with, we can cross this out. We're left with 4x is equal to 24 minus 16 is 8. And then we divide both sides by 4. Divide this by 4, so then our x is 2. So the x value that we have is 2. So this portion right here is actually 2. Now, how do we know if we got our answer correct? We can check our work by plugging um, in 2 back into this equation. So we're going to use this um, equation up here. So let's see if this would work. So we are now checking. So first we have 3, so I'm just going to rewrite it. So 3 times 3 plus 5 is that equals. We're not sure of that yet. I put a question mark. So that would be 4 
times 4 plus, again, our x is 2, so I'm going to write 2 over there. So that would be 3 times 5 plus uh, 3 is 8. So is that equal to 4 times 4 plus 2 is 6. So 3 times 8 is 24. 4 times 6 is 24. So that means our x value, which is 2, is correct. At this time, I would encourage you to pause this video and try this problem out on your own. And when you're done, and pause it and check your answer. Okay, so we go over the problem here. So it's pretty much the same thing. We use the formula right here. Let's start with this uh, secant first. So again, that's going to be the external. So that is our x. So I write x times the whole thing. So the whole thing would be x plus 6. And then we go to the other secant. So we have the external is 7. And then the entire would be 7 plus 9. So then from here, we uh, we can't add the um, x and the 6. However, we can distribute this to solve for x. So then we are left with x squared plus 6x is equal to, we can simplify, 7 plus 9 would be, uh, we can, if you want, we can also distribute this too. That should be fine too. So get, we, we are able to do the same thing with the other side here. Or you can go ahead and add them just like how I did over here. It doesn't really matter. The answer would still be the same. So I can have 7 times 7 would be 49 plus 7 times 9 would be 63. So then we can simplify this to be um, x squared plus 6x is equal to 112. So we want to solve for x. So that means we are going to subtract 112 from both sides to make it zero so that we can use the zero product property. So I subtracted um, 112. So this equation would come out to be x squared plus 6x minus 112 is equal to zero. And then from here, we can use the zero product property to solve for x. However, we need to uh, change this into its factored form. So then I am going to show, we are going to use the box and diamond for this um, in order that we can factor out um, the uh, this, uh, we can factor this uh, trinomial right here. So we are going to use the box and diamond here. So I'm just going to write the diamond first. So remember, there's another video on the diamond. We are going to multiply the first and the last. So that would be negative 112x squared. And then the bottom will go to, the, or the bottom of the diamond will be the middle term, which is 6x. And we find the factors. The factors that would work uh, when we multiply two numbers, it's negative 112x squared. And when we add them, it's 6x. This would be 14x and... Um, the other one is negative 8x. So those are the factors. So then from here, I am going to um, draw the box to get the factors. So I will draw the box here. So then um, that would be th the one that we write here is the first term. So that's x squared. And then um, the one that we write here is the last term, negative 112. And then the red factors that we got from the diamond will be here. So that's 14x and negative 8x. So then to find the factors, that would be x and x. That is x squared. So this will be 14 and this will be negative 8. So negative 8 times x is negative 8x. Negative 8 times 14 is negative 112. 14 times x is 14x. So the factors are these two. So these two are the factors. So from here... I can go ahead and change this to its factored form. That would be x plus 14 times um, x minus 8 equals 0. And then from here, we are going to use the zero product property to solve for the uh, value of x. So then I'm going to show the zero product property here. So I will um, move this up here. So what are we going to do is we equal them to 0. So the first one would be x plus 14 equals 0, so that's a 14. And then the other one is x minus 8 equals 0. So equal both of them equal to 0. So that would be minus 14 and minus 14. So that would be x is equal to negative 14. That's the first x. And then plus 8 and plus 8, that would be 
x is equal to 8. Okay, so we have two solutions here. However, we're looking for the length. We cannot have a negative length. So this one is not the solution because this negative 14 would not make sense because there's no negative, uh, negative length. So this is not the solution. So I'm going to label this as not the solution. However, eight, negative 8 is actually our solution. So then our x right here is equal to 8. Now, let's try to see if this would work. One way to do that is to check. So I will show the work up here. So let's check our work by plugging x back into the equation. So that would be 8 times 8 plus 6. Is that equal to 7 times 7 plus 9? Okay, so that would be 8 times 8 plus 6 is 14. And then we're not sure if that would equal to the right side of the equation. 7 plus 9 is 16. Then we multiply 8 times um, 14. If you use calculator, that would be 112. And 7 times 16 is 112. So that means we are correct. Our x is 8. So the x here is not negative 14. Did you get the same answers as this? Good, perfect. Now let's move on to the next problem right here. So what happens if our um, the measures are in expressions? So again, we uh, still have to do the same thing. It's the same process. So in this problem right here, we are going to use this formula in order that we can um, solve for x. So in this case right here, we write, this is the first uh, secant and this is the other secant. We write the external first or the outside. So that would be 8. So I'm going to write 8 times the entire would be 8 plus the one that's on the inside is an expression x minus 4 equals the external on the other uh, secant is 7. And then the entire is 7 plus the other part right here, dc, is x minus 1. So then from here, we can combine like terms. So that would be 8 times. We write the x first. And then 8 minus 4 is a positive 4. And that is equal to 7 times. We write the x first. That is 7 minus 1 is a positive 6. And then from here, we are going to distribute the uh, uh, terms that is outside the parentheses to all of the terms inside the parentheses. So this would come out 8x plus 8 times 4 is 32. And that is equal to 7x plus 7 times 6 is 42. So we're ready to solve for x. So we're going to subtract uh, 7x from both sides minus 7x. So then we are left with, so let me use the blue for this. So we are left with 1, 7 minus, uh, I mean 8 minus 7x is just 1x. We can just go ahead and write x plus 32 equals 42. We want the x by itself. So then we are going to subtract um, 32 from both sides minus 32. So then we are left with x is equal to 10. So our value of x is 10. So this is 10 right here. Now we are looking for AB. So to find for AB, we plug the value of x into the expression for AB is right here. So that would be 10 minus 4 is 6. So this length right here, AB is 6. Now we want to solve for DC or CD. So we're going to plug this into X minus 1, which is X is 10. So I'm going to plug it in. So 10 minus 1. This measure right here is from D going to C is 9. So this one right here is 9. So then uh, DC right here is 9. So we can check if we got the correct answer to this by uh, plugging in the value of x back into the equation. So again, this time we are checking. So let's check 
to check this, we're gonna use this equation. So I'm gonna use this equation again, but this time around, we don't have the x anymore because we know that x is already um, 10. So I can go ahead eight times eight plus the x was already 10, so I put 10 and then minus four. So I'll just copy everything, but instead I change the x into a 10. Is that equal? So it's still a question mark. We still don't know if that would be equal to each other. That is seven times seven plus, <clears throat> again, the x is 10, so I'll put that in there, 10. And then that's a minus one. So then we simplify. So that's eight times, that's 18 minus four is 14. Is that equal to seven times, that's 17 minus one is 16. And so eight times uh, 14 is 112 and seven times 16 is 112. So that means this um, value for X is correct. Did you get the same answers as this? Good, perfect. If you find this video helpful, hit like and subscribe for more math videos. See ya.